All right, so hello everybody. Welcome to WSB 90.1 FM. This is China Blue, and with me today are... Hi, I'm Thomas Tan, and I'm the president of VSA. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm the event coordinator. Hi, my name is Joyce, and I'm a sophomore representative. All right, so today we'll be talking about VSA, and uh, Thomas, could you tell us about what VSA is and what they do? So VSA stands for the Vietnamese Student Association, and our mission statement is to establish a community where Vietnamese culture is valued, shared, and appreciated. All of our members have that down by heart, um, and we do that through cultural events, um, and we try to aim for genuine relationships. So we really try to utilize our family program, which is the Yadin program. Um, one of, uh, a couple of our biggest events are Miss Asia, which is a cultural pageant where we ask um, volunteers from our GBM or from other organizations to really represent their culture. Um, and in the spring, we have Spirit of Saigon, where we try to bring as much as of Vietnamese culture to campus. Um, and these are done by a couple booths where we talk about culture, language, dance, um, food, and whatever whatever we can think of. So for I personally never went to uh, Spirit of Saigon. When you say booths, is it like set up outside the sack? Like, how, how does it go? Because like most of the events are always inside like, on the designated room. Mm -hmm. So last, or not last year, but two years ago when we were able to have it, uh, we hosted it in GLS and the booths were, there were tables and then there were a couple poles that made it look like more of a stand. But when we are hoping in the future to expand it to outside, um, if possible, uh, rent out a couple of tents and really try to push for that overall atmosphere. Um, I remember going to the Spirit of Saigon uh, the last time you had it, I'm not sure, but I think it was at GLS and you guys had the um, like Vietnamese like clothing to try on and I thought that was like really interesting and I really loved your food. So I'm looking forward to your event. Thank you. Yes. So the stands are actually um, separated off by district. So I, I was handling the games district with the president of that year. Um, and I believe Victoria was handling the fashion district um, up in the front. So do you guys still plan to like attempt to host this event this year considering yes. it happened? Oh. Yes, we are. Um, we are still trying to accommodate for the amount of like people uh, and the large like audience. As, um, so it could be through like a cyclical like system where people come in and out to enjoy the event. Um, but we won't be able to have food. The other aspects of culture are definitely worth it to come out still. You'll still be able to see all the aoyais, which is the um, formal dressing uh, that Disha, you might have uh, tried on during that year. Um, language. And we've also had a couple of districts that handle religion. Um, if you're into games, you can play a couple of Vietnamese games and potentially win a couple of prizes. So you mentioned earlier that you guys have a family program. Uh, I don't really know how to say the name, but like, what, what exactly do you do in the family program? Mm -hmm. Would with uh, Stephanie Joyce, would you like to explain what our family program is? Yeah, I can explain it. So our Yadin family program is just how um, we bond and get intimate with our general body members as well as our cabinets. So we basically assign people to be the An or the Chi. An is older brother, Chi is older sister, and then the younger person or well, they don't have to be younger, but the younger one will be M. And yeah, that's just basically like how we just interact and get closer with one another. And it's just like a family. So we have different families right now. Um, Tom is actually my G big or basically my G on. And um, so he's my bigs big. Mm -hmm. And Steph is also part of my uh, family. So we're called the baby fam. <laughs> 
Um, well, I love that uh, that you guys are trying to like build that uh, interconnectedness within your club. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, so, but so what drew you to BSA? Why BSA specifically? Besides, uh, yeah, besides like the Jia Din, if I, I don't know if I butchered that part of the club. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I can start. Uh, my story is like, in my opinion, it's like pretty funny because there were like little signs that like pushed me towards it. Um, so freshman year, I was part of another club, but my dad, um, uh, I told my dad, I was like, yo, I was part of this club. It's kind of cool, you know? And he was like, okay. <laughs> he was like, whatever. But then um, I think I went to a VSA event. Uh, it was Jan Night, which is a Vietnamese dessert. Um, and I went with another cabinet member, uh, current cabinet member. Her name is Victoria. And then she was the one who actually pushed me to, you know, hey, Thomas, I think it's a good idea if we just sign up. And I was like, cool, I'm going to sign up. <laughs> And I didn't put too much thought into it, um, but something told me that, like, I was more willing to, like, sign up for this club. I liked the overall vibe. Um, I liked what they stood for. Um, and the people that I met there were really cool. And I think the nail in the coffin was when I told my dad this time. I was like, hey, I went to a Vietnamese event. He was like, yo, that's where you should be going. And I think it had overall just led me to the path of reconnecting with my cultural roots. Um, and I've just been going deeper and deeper into the like VSA hole ever since. Wait, that sounds really amazing. And I'm glad that you found your home on campus. Thank you, thank you. Would uh, Joyce, would you like to share your experience? Yeah, I actually want to hear Stephanie's story first, our event coordinator. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> Um, my story. My story actually started in high school, kind of, because um, I always felt kind of lost with my identity because um, my parents actually kind of never explained it to me, like what, where I belong or like what culture. I didn't even know I was Asian when I was oh growing up because like they just never told me. And then eventually, like as I grew up, I was like, oh, I'm Asian. And then what kind of Asian am I? And then I, I realized like I'm a lot like my ancestors are from China, but my both my parents and my grandparents were born in Vietnam. Um, and so I'm, I've been kind of balancing like the two growing up, but in high school, I like, I, I think I wanted to make a club that kind of made me feel proud of who I am. So I started a VSA in high school actually, and it was really small. I think a lot of it, a lot of the members were just my friends. But I also met a lot of uh, Vietnamese students making the club and that really inspired me like um, for college I knew oh I really want to join VSA but I actually didn't join my freshman year I took it kind of slow because I wanted to kind of explore college life first and I think as I the years went by I think my first event was one May night and um, I went with Brian and a few of his other friends, which I actually met. He um, he's part of VSA now, but I met him in freshman year. And um, I think, like Tom said, I just really like the vibes. Everyone was really really nice, and um, I think I went to a lot of events. But when I went to Bunmay Night, I really felt like connected to like um, all the cabinet members, and I just really liked how they hosted the event too. And another event that stood out to me was um, Coffee House, which was in spring semester. And then uh, I, when I went in, it was like so pretty. And um, I knew then sophomore year, I, I would wanna try out to join BSA. And then that's when I interviewed and did the whole process. And I'm really glad I joined. Oh my God, I'm so that's proud okay. of you. You went from like not being in two different culture to like being event coordinator. Like that requires like a lot of you know, brain power to come up with these events that are related to like your culture. So that's really good. And you, Joyce? <laughs> yeah, my story, kind of funny. So I also, I actually joined this year. I'm a sophomore this year. So um, I joined uh, because, well, first, 
when I, f- I went, okay, so the first event I actually went to was One Week of Fun, and it was the sc- uh, Scribble Knots. Yeah, the Scribble Knots event. I went in and I saw Tom, and then <laughs> every other event that I went to, every event, event after that, I see Tom in the same breakout room. I leave the breakout room. We go into a separate breakout room. It's still Tom. So <laughs> honestly, I feel like I got baited into this club, you know, <laughs> the saying kind of rigged it. But um, I feel like the people in VSA has shown me like such a genuine side because in freshman year, I was really lonely. You know, I didn't go out to events. I was just kind of like a hermit staying in my dorm, you know, sad vibes, 3, 3 a.m. sad boy hours. But <laughs> you know, VSA like really brought out like, took me out of my comfort zone. And I found myself going back to the events without anyone having to tell me to. And like, I was still like pretty shy, you know, like I didn't want to like go out to events still, but just being with the people VSA, like it calmed me, like I had a lot of fun. And (laughs) yeah, I'm just honestly so glad I joined and met like the most genuine people in my life right now. And everyone's like super A1. That sounds really sweet, but why are you um, in the breakout room, Tom? What the heck? Um, why, are you, why are you following her around? <laughs> you, to you know what? My favorite part of that whole experience, I remember specifically saying to my breakout room, I was like, okay, guys, you know, it was really great meeting you. Um, And we're going to randomize the rooms now. And, you know, it was really great seeing you. See you guys at the next event, maybe. We randomized the room. She's still in there. I'm like, what? How are you here? <laughs> Dang. I'm cursed. I was cursed with him. <laughs> now he's my G big. I can't leave. It oh, was, man, that's it true. Nice. It's one thing to another. <laughs> All right. So after you guys joined the club, what was like your like most memorable or like favorite moment then? Ooh, there's two. There's two. Oh. Okay. I think um at Stony Brook, it was, it's it's Miss Asia. Um so I was event coordinator last year. Uh, so planning it, it was long, but although we had like 7 a.m. like meetings until 7 a.m. like for like two weeks straight, the actual like event ran like pretty smoothly because of all like the planning we did. Um, and I think it was like the biggest project like I've had to do like for school, for club, like of my life. Um, and it was just really, like, amazing to see everything come together. And all the clubs, like, really enjoy the event. And um, I know me and the event coordinator of that year are super proud to to have had that. Um, and then number two where is VEST. So we VSA at Stony Brook is part of a larger organization called UNAFSA, uh, which is the union of... Um, no- we're part of the Northeast region, but it's basically a union of VSAs across um, the United States uh, of North America. Uh, I think our furthest one now is Arizona. And they were really cool to meet. Um, they even gave us like, or we, we copped a bunch of their merch. If you ever guys, if you guys ever to get to see it. Um, but back to the uh, conference, which is VEST, stands for Vietnamese Empowerment Summit. That was the most social interaction I've ever had to do. Um, the amount of people I was able to meet and network with was just crazy. All the workshops were really fun. Um, there were a lot of professional ones, but there were also a lot of cultural ones where you really got to learn like fan dancing. Um, and the larger organization rents out an entire like hotel for that weekend. Um, so basically any room you went to it was just a whole bunch of VSA people from like other schools. Um, and we just like went around, met each other and really got to um, connect with kind of like like minded people. So that was my experience. Um, who would like to go next? I heard Stephanie has wants to tell us her story again. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. I think my favorite event would be like that we hosted last year was Miss Asia. But since Tom talked about it a bit, I think 
this year for um our virtual event for like kind of a different take i think one of my favorite events was our halloween event it was like uh v vs afraid and um i think it was one of my favorite events because it i didn't know how the event would come out to like a lot of it was very collaborative um like we had three sections of the event one was like vietnamese um scary storytelling another part was um like oh rid riddles like um scary riddles that the rest of uh gbm would solve and then third one my favorite was we did a skit um with like about five of our cabinet members it was like office team but like scary office team and it was just so funny like throughout the whole event i just um it was really nice because everyone felt like they had a role um into like hosting the event and um at the end this like that little play it was just it was so funny to watch it and um i think it, it came out like i think we really balanced um interaction with gbm and also like um, having fun as a cabinet um, for that event. Um, I think externally, uh, we had like a Poconos trip with Temple VSA la happened last year. And that event was just really fun because um, I think it was the first time that we I got to know another VSA uh, closer than um, before. And we went skiing and we stayed at a house and um, it was just really nice getting to know how they run their VSA and getting to know their cabinet. Um, but other than that, I think it's just like a collection of small moments and memories. I think like I really treasure the moments where I could just go uh, reach out to my cabinet or I just bump into them in on campus or we just hang out. Um, they're just really nice to be around. They always like lift up my uh, mood and energy. But yeah, I'll pass it to Joyce now. Funny you bring up be be afraid, cause that was actually one of my favorite events as well, cause that was the first time I performed a skit in a really long time. I think like growing up, I've done like a bunch of skits, but so I had the character Kelly Kapoor, and in cabinet people know me as men ain't shh, you know men is trash. The moment I hopped into the call the skit, I came into frame. The only thing I could do was, oh my God, my boyfriend, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to kick it back, you know. I had the like the most, you know, nasally voice and I had a different character. So that was really fun. And also shameless promotion. Um, if you guys are interested to see um, Miss Asia from last year, it's on our YouTube right now, which is made by my big which is my second favorite um, event or memory that I've had with VSA because I got picked up by Brian. <laughs> and honestly, that was like a really special moment to me because I got accepted into the line and, you know, the Hamjoy line, you know, we're all chonky dudes that, <laughs> that are powerful. We're alpha females, males, you know, yeah. amazing people. <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite memories. <laughs> Uh, speaking of uh, Miss Asia, I have, I have to say, like, I went to, like, freshman year and, like, sophomore year before I joined TV. I, like, went around to a lot of events from, like, mostly, like, all the cultural clubs. And, like, I have to say, like, out of, like, all the events I've gone to, Miss Asia is probably, like, one of the biggest. And, like, I, I don't know how to explain it. There's, like, nice, like, homey events. And then Miss Asia is, like, on a whole different scale. It's, it's kind of similar to, like, a whole, like, show kind of it's honestly amazing and uh having uh performed in it myself at one point i have to say it's it's quite fun wait clip right here oh no <laughs> <laughs> just a just a little time stamp well thank you all for sharing that with us um i think it's really cool how you guys have chapters within your like club um and that really allows room for like that network and connection that maybe like what a person is looking for um and all of that like 
I know some people join sororities and fraternities for that sort of like networking connection, but like um, this club kind of, you know, shows that you don't have to join a sorority or a fraternity to get that because there's chapters within your club and for that connection. Yeah. yeah. And if it's like professionalism, you're looking in the network, like the larger organization ho- have, has um, their own personal LinkedIn with all those connections. Um, with so many schools, if you're looking for like medical help or if you're in the medical field and looking for that kind of help, if you're looking for like software engineering, yo, <laughs> it's the Vietnamese Student Association. There's definitely going to be what you're looking for there. Dang, I'm convinced. About to join. <laughs> Come through, come through. <laughs> so, uh, what is what is like, you know? So, like, you join the club, and it's like really reconnected you with your culture, and you've met a lot of amazing people. So, what is like something you've like learned about your culture that you like really love? Let's see. I think, oh. The aspect of like um, nightlife is much different than nightlife in America. Uh, it's a lot of like, you know, sipping beers and really enjoying the atmosphere with each other rather than getting pub stomped in like one go. <laughs> uh, so I really enjoy that part. Um, the Actually, I really enjoy... Vietnamese opera a lot more I think as a kid I was like what is what am I listening to but like over the years like getting like kind of like reintroduced to Vietnamese opera I was like yo this kind of fire okay I like it I like it um there's also like a lot of shows uh so there's something that we're trying to kind of bring to Stony Brook which is Paris by Night which is a whole uh it, it used to be a show that ran um, on in Vietnam that focused around like a whole bunch of TV skits uh, and we're trying to bring that to Stony Brook through an event so that's why I enjoy Ooh, are we going to see more of Joyce's impressions <laughs> potentially Ooh. potential but I, I can add on well I'm, at, I'm not actually Vietnamese I'm Chinese but I could say that joining the club has taught me a lot about the Vietnamese culture and not even just like throughout the events, I think throughout like our weekly meetings, our cabinet members are always trying to teach us like little things. And we've started teaching our GBM members like little phrases. So we've taught them say how to say hello and how to say my name is. Um, I'm gonna butcher it, so I'm not gonna (laughs) use myself as an example. But I think that is a really like, fun thing about VSA that we're doing right now because we're teaching a language and I think our historian Justin was actually trying to teach us um, like words that are kind of like similar to Chinese because he understands both so like our Yadin like a family it sounds it sounds kind of familiar well hold on sorry it sounds kind of similar to how you say uh how like family in Chinese so Mandarin uh Jatin Jating, sorry, uh, or in Canto, uh, Gating, right? It sounds kind of similar to Yadin, right? Mm-hmm. I butchered that up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait, no, you did great. That was actually on point. That was on point. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then I'll pass this on to Steph. Um, I think any moments that I'm kind of reminded of home and my family and I'm actually on campus in VSA is like when I'm just like, oh, Wow. <laughs> I think food, I definitely, actually as a kid, I did not like Vietnamese food that much, but over the years, um, my mom always cooks it. So like I, I got used to it. And then also seeing in a different light when we would bring food for a GBM, you see like how happy they are to like receive all this food. And then um, also been introduced to like new food as uh, we explore our like different options. And then I think um, a lot of some of our cabinet is actually fluent in Vietnamese, and I, I I I can only understand it. I can't really speak it that much. So anytime like um, I hear them talking and like I can understand, it feels really good. And then they also teach me like new phrases, like Joy said. And then that's also something we're trying to incorporate for our events. Um, I really like the. Um, 
on Instagram, our cultural chair, Christina, and uh, PR, Kimberly, they've been working on a project called um, Tra Travel Through Vietnam. And every, so, like, pretty often they have a new part of Vietnam that they explore and they show like the landmarks, attractions and food that you should try there. And it's really fun looking through that. Um, I haven't been to Vietnam since I was three and it's really fun like reading up on all the research they did. And then um, Justin, our historian and Christina are also, they're about to do something. So you could look out for that. Yeah, I'll definitely look forward to that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to plug in the website here because we have a page, uh, a section of the website that deals with all like the cultural like resources. Like so, the posts that we have done, um, that Steph was talking about, it's all here. There are also a couple of videos, um, regarding like dance and opera, uh, that I've mentioned before. But all these, um, all these texts lead to a pdf file that um our cabinet members have researched and placed in the folder i have a question um i know like both joyce and stephanie like they mentioned how you guys teach like vietnamese phrases would you like to teach some to us oh i heard tom has the best viet accent in here the that's best crazy it's kind of because i get flamed <laughs> by the rest of the cabinet members <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm not the most skilled Vietnamese speaker here but um I'll just teach you guys how to say hello um it's just two words and it's pronounced xin chào xin chào yes 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 and that says that means hello okay, nice. Uh, I know that Steph also like mentioned that she went to Vietnam when she was three. Would anyone else like to like talk about their favorite like experience in Vietnam? Like, were there any like particular foods that you really liked, or if you ever even like visited? I visited um a few times, but when I was much younger, I haven't been there in many many years, so my memory might be a little a little vague. Um. I think the staying at the hotels was pretty fun. Um, they have, you know, the Hiltons over there too. <laughs> so that's where we stayed as well. Um, I, I remember really like watching like the shows on there. Uh, it was like Viet dub, but for some reason had English sub because it was like the hotel and they kind of knew like this is where they, the tourists all stay. <laughs> so that already had that set up. Um, at night, going through the night market was one of my favorite parts because you could find anything I, I think as an adult you think like oh you could find anything there to me as a kid I was like wow all the toys are here and I think I got like a like a bootleg transformer um so that was really fun to do the malls were also actually I don't remember the malls as much I think the night market was basically the mall over there um but it's also like a hub for a whole bunch of social interaction because in the night market right next to it was like all the food and all like the drinks that um mo more of the older people would enjoy when you say night market i like in my experience i don't know it might just be like the ones i've gone to but it's always like mostly food but it's like the night market they're more of like a like a giant mall kind of Kind of. So, like, there's a whole bunch of, like, stalls. Um, You could buy clothes there. You could buy food there. The food stalls are, like, basically, like, half of the portion. Um, There's a whole bunch of... If you've ever been to, like, um Chinatown or, like, uh in Brooklyn with the markets, there's, like, a whole bunch of, like, toys on the floor. You know, people are selling all different kinds of things. Um, So, it's kind of like that, where it's more... There's more variety in the items you can get. Um, similar to Chinatown, like, do they sell any, like, traditional wear there? Yes, of course. You can get anything at the night market. There's, like, a whole bunch of, like, so that's probably towards, like, the, the, clo the clothing section. And uh, depending on the stall, it could be, like, 
they could hang it all on a rack or like they could have like three racks and like section it off. Um, so when you walk in, they have, you know, all those selections. Um, the, st the, uh, the stall owner will most likely be there. Um, but I'm, I'm talking off of like experience from when I was like oh, super, super young. So that's all I can really remember. You remember a lot though. Like <laughs> it was lit. You really left an impression though. You, everything's there. It's because mm -hmm. I was a kid. I was a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds very fun. Now I would like to visit there in the future. So something I've been wondering is as a club, how do you guys like aside from your families, how do you like kind of interact and get close to your new rep? We have a new rep here. I'll, I'll, I'll let her speak. <laughs> but um, we usually go through things. Well, we, we title it as cab bonding. Um, and these could be done like during meetings, uh, like before the meetings. I think our most successful ones are like after the meetings um, when like everyone's not busy. The most iconic one in my memory is the Omega session we had. Uh, so I think on Zoom, we finished the meeting and I don't know, I think we just wanted to go on Omegle. So we had one person represent all 24 of us and shared their like screen with Omegle and shared their audio. So we were just, you know, walking around on Omegle, meeting cool people. Tom was actually one of our sacrifices and oh, every no. single girl passed up on him. Just no. wanted to put it out there. So ladies, <laughs> ladies, trying to hit him up right there. Um, but yeah, as a new rep, I can definitely say that after our weekly meetings, we have our cab bonding moments. It's usually just either we're like crackhead hours or we're all crying. There's like no in between. But <laughs> other than that, we try to like, you know, coordinate like little hangouts like on the weekends because we have members that are both on campus and off campus. Um, so we try to like incorporate everyone as much as possible. We actually have someone, our only freshman rep, like she lives upstate and we still haven't seen her. So we're trying to coordinate something so that she can come down at one point and then just see all of us. But um, yeah, we just do kind of like cab, like cap meetings and like cap hangouts. We also have this thing where it's called uh, Tom Su, which is like, we're not really strangers. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. It's like a bunch of questions with different levels. And as you per go down like into like level three, the questions get more deeper and more personal. And then you just kind of get to know the person better. Oh, is it that red box? Yeah, it's the red box. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like a Vietnamese like version called Tom Su, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Tom Su, Tom Su, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, our junior rep Mai has also been holding like study sessions every week even more than once a week, actually, but just like whenever we're free. Um, or we could meet up in the library too. We just study together. It's another easy way for us to bond. And I think something, when I think of like cab bonding, I I don't know if you heard of this restaurant called Bahama Breeze, but like we always go there. <laughs> Literally since I joined too, like um, I remember the the day that we came in, for, um, to join cabinet or we found out that we joined cabinet I think Ebor at the time were like oh you guys want to go to Bahama Breeze and we were like okay that was like my first time going there and ever since then I've been there a good amount of times um so yeah check it out you might see us there if you go gotta go for the half off wings yes the wings are so good <laughs> did you have like a favorite dish there <laughs> Size the baby. The baby. Oh, the baby ribs. The baby ribs were pretty, like, really good. I think I split like uh, a rack with Edwin, um, another cabinet member of ours, and it's pretty tender. You guys should check it out. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna move into a quick music break. So I'm 
đã biết dù anh đã biết yêu em thật nhiều mà vẫn mãi trong anh bao nhiêu điều xót xa dù anh vẫn muốn dù anh vẫn muốn bên em thật gần mà con tim người từ bao lâu vẫn lạnh lùng thật sâu trong em mất anh có bóng hiền một ai khác và dù anh cũng nói ra anh cũng biết đau muộn màng thì thôi đừng dừng lấy những tâm tư trong lòng dấu kín đành ôm hết những yêu phiền cùng nước mắt trong tim Chẳng biết anh đang thế nào, hôm nay của anh ra sao? Chẳng biết anh đang nghĩ gì, có nghĩ về em không? Có lúc em tự hỏi mình, anh có thực sự yêu em như lời anh nói, hay tan thành mây khói? Em sợ anh đôi khi vô tâm quên mất em, đôi khi quên nhung nhớ về em. Còn em.
cứ thẫn thờ đôi khi dẫn hơn vũ vơ có lúc em lại e sợ đời không đẹp như mơ có lúc em tự hỏi mình anh có thực sự yêu em như lời anh nói hay tan thành mây khói em sợ anh đôi khi vô tâm quên mất em đôi khi quên nhung nhớ về em còn em
All right, uh, welcome back. This is WSB 90.1 and back to VSA. So what kind of traditions do you guys have within the club? That is a great question. So Stony, we actually have a VSA chant that is usually led by our president, Thomas Tan, and everyone has to chant after him after he gives like the first two lines. And we also have a more recent tradition, which we call like the wheel of death. So, you know, if no one wants to volunteer themselves to MC or be team leader or, you know, just any kind of like activity, we put everyone's names on this wheel, just pretend there's a wheel here and then we spin it and whoever gets chosen um, is usually MC or whatever it is, but you know, it's a good way to get like everyone to be included because there's like a bunch of people that have MC before and then a lot of people that hasn't like, especially like the new reps. So we just try to include everyone. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you guys have a BSA chant. Would you like to show us how it's done? <laughs> yes, of course. So because Tom, our president is not here, I will substitute as his G little. So what happens is the two chants, we have two lines and then I'm gonna say VSA three times after that. And you guys are just gonna follow up with all day, all three times. And then, yeah. So everyone's gonna say all together. So you guys ready? Yep. Okay. All right. So Stony Brook VSA, we can do this every day. VSA, all, all day. day. VSA, all, all day. day. VSA, all, all day. day. Nice. Oh my God, you guys are fire, China blue. <laughs> Debbie Ryan. <laughs> All right. So, thank you, everyone. This has been WSB ninety point one FM. Please tune in next time for more.
上我的男孩，他说某天撞见他是最美好的意外。渐渐他对他产生依赖，他对他影响不来。后来两人彼此明白，最后他们相爱。突然，支离破碎。
须没有人注意到我，看你被他亲吻到血脱，还在幸福的笑着，全世界野花为你们绽放着。看周围人全沦为配角，连鸟儿都紧张着参合。他一生定比天使快乐，就算现在死都值得。如果如果我可以变成他就好了，这样的话你也就会只属于我。我就我就再也不用像个卑微的偷窥者，你也只能心甘情愿的爱着我、哦。可惜事情都没有如梦，如同冰心的你，怎会在乎我？为何为何？我知道的。他亲吻到虚脱，还在幸福的笑着，全世界烟花为你们绽放着。看周围人全沦为配角，连鸟儿都紧张着参合。他一生定比天使快乐，就算现在死都值得。如果。变成他就好了，这样的话你也就会只属于我。我就我就再也不用像个卑微的偷窥者，你也只能心甘情愿的爱着我。情。